Hello, and welcome to Folger Encores. I'm Cleo House Jr. I was one of the three weird sisters in the company of Macbeth for Folger Theater and Two River Theater Company. The Folger launched this new series, Folger Encores, that brings plays, music, and spoken word from the Folger archives directly to you. The time we spent working on Macbeth was probably one of the most exciting and fulfilling times of my career. You are going to see a scene from the special features that were created to go alongside our film production of Macbeth. This Macbeth, co-created and conceived by Aaron Posner and Teller, was a bloody business. And this section is from Blood Will Have Blood. If you haven't had a chance to see any of the other special features or the film or the full film, we've made them all available for you on YouTube. We hope you will watch and enjoy. If you would like to know more about the Folger Theater, please visit folger.edu. There you will find performance histories, artist bios, and information about upcoming programs. We hope you will join us for these weekly episodes of Encores, highlighting all that the Folger has to offer. Thank you for tuning in. We thought of Macbeth as a classic suspense horror thriller, as a horror movie. I have supped full with horrors. Dionys, familiar to my slaughterous thoughts, no longer frights me. All of the elements that we're accustomed to in Nightmare on Elm Street show up in Macbeth, only they're so much better written. The raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. The designers watched a fair number of horror movies, and I promised that I would watch many of these movies. And I don't think I ever actually really made it past Psycho and Shaun of the Dead. Um, uh, because they scare the hell out of me. Gorgeous, terrifying, and very unpleasant. <laughs> this is the most terrifying experience a human being could have. I think we need fresh blood, and we need to get that blood off of Ian's face real quick. We're not actually alluding to any horror movies in particular in this show, but I do come out of a background of loving certain kinds of horror. The place where it really stands out, of course, is the scene where Mrs. Macduff is murdered. Bless you, fair dame, to you and not known. I fear some danger does approach you nearly. The scene is initially lit only with two very strong lights coming through the barred windows at the end of the scene, two beams coming through prison bars, and those open up to reveal the murderers. What are these faces? Where's your husband? And, you know, she's dead by the time the door is open. <laughs> It's very hard to do a horror movie. Imagine a horror movie without any soundtrack. My favorite death sound, it's pretty twisted, but when they kill McDuff's wife, I do this really cool thing with this nail stick mallet thing, and I jab it into the piano a bunch of times when they kill her. And you can hear every person in the audience, but particularly the women in the audience, groaning. We had one show where somebody in the audience went, oh my god, yeah. loudly. <laughs> it will have blood. They say blood will have blood. 
It is my understanding that there was no shortage of blood on stage in Shakespearean productions. Blood. Blood. Bloody. Blood. Bloody. Blood. 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 Bloody. Blood. Bloody. Bloody business. And we've decided, you know, to support that. This is all bloody. I'm gonna be all bloody. You got some blood on your shoes. And everyone's dying. It's all the rage. And there's tons of blood. I'm making the blood that we use for any of the onstage fight blood. Put water in here and then just fill with the rest with blood. So that way it's a little bit more liquidy. We have another kind of blood that's called mint. Zesty Mint Blood by Ben Nye uh, that we use any time it goes into their mouth or they might swallow it in some capacity. Cool it with a baboon's blood. This blood is the detergent blood. There's a lot of detergent in it so that when it gets on the costumes it'll come out fairly easily. I call myself the blood mistress. It's different every night, because the way he dies is different every single night, so the blood gets on different places. Blood can be life-affirming, and it can also be death. That's the purpose of having all that blood visible, and that's one of the reasons why we went so incredibly horrific. The whole idea of of drooling the blood. It can't look like you're pushing it out. Never shake that gory locks at me. It almost has to create a puddle of saliva in your mouth. It's mingled with the blood and then just the breathing sort of works it out so that it dribbles and trying to create it so that it continues to flow. This is more strange than such a murder is. I've got an uh, undergraduate degree in acting and MFA and they don't teach blood capsules and drooling and things like that. <laughs> Those are skills that uh, you acquire with years of experience. What I love is that the, the moments in the play that are really, truly horrifying are almost immediately followed by a giggle. Yeah! So the audience will go, oh, no! just, like, just like you should in a good horror movie. It's a big old wet, nasty mess. Oh, it's a good one. And it's one of those neat things as an actor you get to do, like learn to ride a horse or get covered in blood. You don't go to a horror movie and come out depressed. You go to a horror movie and come out full of life. Sometimes I find myself thinking, damn man, I'm at work. <laughs> this is my job. It's awesome. Totally awesome. <laughs> I'm the most beautiful girl in the room. <laughs> okay, okay. It's been intense and great and a dream come true. And also just nightmarish at times. <laughs> so it's been everything a, a, a good show is.